Hey, what's up and welcome back to the channel and to the sixth and final episode of the series that we've been in for the last month that I've been calling How I Edit My Wedding Films. Today we're diving into what's probably my favorite part of editing wedding films, the one thing that really gets overlooked in a lot of wedding film edits, but really helps set the environment and the scene for the entire film, for how it feels, and for how immersed the viewer feels when they're watching the film, and that is sound design. So if you've been watching along during this series, you might be thinking, Josh, we literally just talked about audio earlier, like a couple episodes ago, didn't we? And yes, you're totally correct. We talked about how I edit the story, the vows, and the musical component of the wedding films. But today we're talking about something that's so much more subtle, and that's building the auditory world in which your wedding film will live, actually creating the environment in which your film is going to live. Essentially what you're doing with sound design is you're basically creating the world beneath the world of your film. So up to this point in the series, we've talked about the audio component of wedding films. So like building the narration and the story and how important it is to kind of get a cohesive story and to create an emotive story and then to back that up with music, which sets the entire mood and then how to support that with the visual edit, how to color grade and basically how I kind of build all those major components of the wedding film. But what that's lacking so far is actually feeling like you're watching the film from the location that it was filmed. A film with just music and narration can be super powerful if you get a really good visual edit, if you've got a really good story edit going and you've supported that with some incredible, compelling, powerful music that can be incredibly powerful film. But what you're doing with sound design is you're actually setting the stage underneath all that stuff. You're creating the environment underneath all of that to make the viewer feel like they're actually there in the moment. And so a film that just has music and a great story and some good vows, it can be a powerful film. And so I'm just gonna show you the first like 30 seconds of a film that I shot out in Portland a few months ago. This is no sound design, just the music and the story. So go ahead and check that out here. I had just started going to this new church there in Las Cruces. Someone invited me to go to like a young adults thing and I was just like, I'm not really into that. But like Jacob kept inviting me so I, I went. As soon as I showed up, first thing I see is her and her black jacket. Yeah, your black jacket. And I was like, dang, this girl's got style. It's not a bad film, right? So like there's a good story, there's some good music, everything that you're seeing there on screen really, really fits what was happening on the day. But what we're lacking in this film is the actual environment. You're not feeling, you know, the rainy day. You're not sensing the wind. You're not feeling the cars as they drive by. You're not feeling kind of like up in the air overlooking the lake as we're coming in towards the getting ready space. You're not you're not feeling any of that stuff. And so you're what you're lacking is the actual environment. There's no environmental noise happening for you to actually feel like you're there. All you're doing is you're kind of like watching something, but you're a little bit disconnected from that. And so that's what you do with sound design is help the viewer feel like they're actually part of the film and actually they're watching things happen. So if the goal is to create that environment, then how do we get there? So I have four steps that I use whenever I do a sound design edit. The first step in my sound design process is turning off the music or turning way down the music and turning off the narration, the vows, the story, any, any of that kind of stuff and watching the film through silently or almost silently and making a list of, you know, hey, what are the sound design elements that I feel like I need? And if there's like a drone shot over the woods, I'm gonna need some some wind and some airy sounds. If I'm you know out in the forest and there's birds chirping or I knew that there was birds chirping on that day, um, I might kind of add that to my list. If I'm shooting inside, I'm gonna add some room sounds and that kind of stuff. Basically any sort of sound design elements that as you watch the film through silently, you go, man, if I could hear this, it would make me feel like I'm in that environment. Cars passing, ocean waves, anything like that that's gonna add texture and that ambient sound to the wedding film. So I make a list of that. And then step two in the process is going through and finding and adding all of those ambient sounds to the wedding film. So I'll go through and I'll add wind noise, I'll add ocean and water waves, I'll add birds chirping. If we're downtown in the city, I might add some cars and sirens and you know, just kind of city noises and all that. Basically any sort of ambient environmental sounds that's gonna kind of set the stage for the entire film. And I try to do this for the entire film, other than maybe like a big element on the dance floor when it's just hard hitting music constantly, other than kind of any of those big, you know, big ceremony moments or big dance moments or anything. I'm trying to find texture and environmental sounds to create a bed of sound over the entire wedding film. And then once I've done that, I can move on to step three in the process, and that's adding a bunch of texture sounds that will just add some extra texture to the wedding film. So those are like whooshes, any sort of like hits that might need to happen at certain spots where it's not really something that was actually 
actually there in the environment, but it's just gonna help add some texture to the wedding film. So I'll add a bunch of textures. And then the fourth piece of the sound design workflow for me is going through and adding like sound effects. So that might be like adding some, you know, eight millimeter film kind of camera reel sound, adding some scratches, any sort of like glitches and that kind of stuff. Things that are gonna complement the visuals to just add some more visual dynamic to the wedding film. And then once all that's done, then I'll go back in and turn the music back on, turn the vows and narration story back on and start mixing all those in so that it's not overpowering. You don't wanna have overpowering sound elements where all you're thinking about is what's happening sound design wise. But what I try to do is I try to make my sound design just fit underneath the music and not underneath those vows so that if you were to turn it off, the film would feel empty, but it's not gonna overpower the music. It's not gonna overpower the story where you're not thinking about it, but if it wasn't there, you would notice. And so to kind of show this example, I wanna show just the sound design elements that I used on that film that I showed you at the beginning, just the first 30 seconds of that wedding film and all the sound design elements I used to create the environment and the texture and the sound. And you'll hear rain, you'll hear cars, you'll hear wind, you'll hear some sound effects, you'll hear some texture elements, um, all those kind of things. So this is just the sound design, no music, no vows, no story. Doesn't that feel so much more like you were actually there, you're actually watching things when the shot kind of cuts to the drone, the you know environmental noise of the cars cut out and you just hear kind of that wind overhead and then cuts right back into the cars and you hear the cars going by and the rain as you're like watching the raindrops fall. So then once you have those sound design elements, then we add the music, we add the vows and the story back in and then you have a final product that sounds something like this. I had just started going to this new church there in Las Cruces. Someone invited me to go to like a young adults thing and I was just like, I'm not really into that. But like Jacob kept inviting me so I, I went. As soon as I showed up, first thing I see is her and her black jacket. Yeah, your black jacket. And I was like, dang, this girl's got style. And there we go. That's the entire first 30 seconds of a Shalani Michaels wedding film, complete with sound design, music, and the narration, all those pieces mixed together to create an environment that's immersive, that feels like you're there, but also music and story that adds emotion, that adds power, that helps you really get immersed in the entire wedding film. So hopefully that's a helpful look at my sound design process and kind of how I build the sound design elements for all of my films. Before I leave though, I do want to leave you with like four specific resources of places where I get those sound design elements. The first of which is Lens Distortions. These guys are phenomenal. I use so many of the packs from them. Um, I, I think they've switched to like a subscription model now, but they have some incredibly high quality, incredibly curated sound effects libraries. They have some really, really great stuff. Um, so definitely check those guys out. If I'm trying to search for a very specific sound design element, I will go to Storyblocks. Um, Storyblocks has some great audio elements that are like very, very specific. So if you need like the sound of a record player scratching, if you need, you know, a group of people laughing, a glass of wine pouring, um, they have very specific elements. I have found I don't like their like big ambient textures nearly as much as I like the stuff from Lens Distortions and other places, but Storyblocks does have some very, very good specific sound design elements if you're looking for specific things. The third place I pull from is filmcrux.com, kind of like lens distortions, but again, just a different library, different tonalities in their sound effects. When I've really liked their stuff, I have a couple of the packs from them and they're phenomenal. And then the final place I pull from is Ezra Cohen's library, um, Esco TV. He has some really, really eclectic, really, really interesting sounds. These tend to be more in like the sound effect category for me, where I'm gonna have some big like 808 hits, or I'm gonna have some cool like glitchy textures or something like that. I'll pull those from his library. Library. He doesn't have as much like ambient stuff and that kind of stuff, but he has some really, really cool kind of eclectic sounds that really just help add a little bit of that extra touch to the wedding film sound design element. And that does it for sound design. Hopefully this has been super helpful. If it has, feel free to drop a like on the video. Let me know that you enjoyed it. If you've been a fan of the series, if you followed along, if you learned some stuff, please let me know in the comments. It just really encourages me to know that you're learning things, that you're growing, that my content is actually helpful for you. Hope all of you in the US have a great holiday weekend and I'll see you right back here next week. Peace.